Okay, so you're looking at the gas law questions uh, under physical behavior of matter for the New York State Chem Regents exams from 2015, the multiple choice. Let's get started. All right, question one, we're dealing with kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic molecular theory is ha has the list of conditions that we follow when we're saying that we have an ideal gas. No real gases are actually ideal. An ideal gas follows a set of conditions. And that's exactly what this question is asking you about. Um, it says, according to kinetic molecular theory, collisions between gas particles in a sample of ideal gas. So we're looking for one of those conditions. Let me just run through them quick. Continuous straight line motion, no volume that the gas actually takes up, no attraction between gas particles, and no energy loss. Well, if you go through these choices, the only one that matches with the list of conditions is choice four. Okay? Um, you need to know them, so make sure that you do. Let's keep going. Question two is asking, under which um, conditions of temperature and pressure does a real gas behave most like an ideal gas? This goes for any gas. That's going to be always conditions of high temperature and low pressure. You got to know this. So that's what you're looking for here. Well, if we take a look at the choices, we have two temperatures and two pressures. So, of course, 347 Kelvin is higher than 37. So we're going to cross out 1 and 2. And then we're looking for high temperature, low pressure, since they're both now the same temperature. Of course, 1 atm is lower in pressure than 8. And that makes the answer choice 3. Let's keep going. Let's go to question three. Again, according to kinetic molecular theory, which statement best describes an ideal gas? Well, again, an ideal gas, straight line motion, continuous, no volume, no attraction, no energy loss. And if we take a look, here it is. There are no attractive forces between the particles. And that describes an ideal gas. Number four. When a sample of a gas is cooled in a sealed, rigid container, the pressure of the gas exerted on the walls of the container will decrease because the gas particles hitting the walls. Well, if I cool a gas, what am I doing? I'm dropping the temperature. If I drop the temperature, I drop also the kinetic energy. Temperature is defined as the kinetic energy of the particles that make up a substance. So temperature and kinetic energy always go hand in hand. So I think we'd all agree that not only are they going to hit the walls of the container less often, there's going to be less force because there's less energy. Check out question five. All right, so we have a cylinder here. We have a movable uh, piston. We got 50 liters. We're at 30 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere. And then what is the volume of the gas in the cylinder at STP? So we're dealing with a combined gas law problem. And if we go to reference table D, here it is, the combined gas law. Now, one thing to always remember with the combined gas law is in any gas law calculation, temperature has to be in Kelvin. The other parameters, the pressure and volume, can be consistent meaning that if you start with ATMs and pressure, you could end with ATMs and pressure. But temperature, if it's in Celsius, it's got to go to Kelvin before you plug it in. So let's go back. Let me do a little erasing here so we get some room. Okay, so we have initial conditions and final conditions. The other thing I'm going to suggest is that you list everything. You have units and the words. So I have 50 liters. 50 liters, of course, is a unit of volume. I have 30 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's temperature, but that's in Kelvin. We have to change that to 273. Do that right away. Use your calculator. Don't skip steps. While you think you can do math in your head, why would you want to make a mistake? So it's 303 Kelvin because I have to add 273. That equation is also on reference table T if you need it. And we have a pressure, I blocked it with my pen here, is 1 atm. So my pressure, 1 atm. 
Then we're asked, well, what is the volume of the gas of the cylinder at STP? That's standard temperature and pressure. That, if you forget, and make sure you look it up, is on reference table A. Here it is. Well, I started with ATMs. I'm going to end with ATMs. And notice it's one ATM, so it's basically constant pressure, even though it didn't say that. And I need the 273 Kelvin, because I can't use Celsius in the formula. So, PV, or P1V1T1, is equal to P2 V2, T2, I'm going to solve for V2, my initial pressure is, I'm going to have to get rid of this, right, is 1 ATM, my initial volume, 50 mil, um, I'm sorry, 50 liters, my initial temperature, I just erased it, was 303 Kelvin, on the other side, um, again, 1 ATM, so I really could cancel those, V2, and my new temperature is standard temperature 273 Kelvin. So I have to solve for V2. The easiest way to do this, I think, would be just to cross multiply and then divide. So let me do that. I have V2 times 303 is equal to, well, 1 times 50 times 273. So I just need V2 alone. Again, use the calculator here. I got my 50 times 273, and then divided by 303. And we get 45 as the answer, which is choice two. Okay, that was questions one through five. Check out part two in another video. Work hard, and good luck.